So hi everybody. Um, I'm Redon. I'm, I'm and Angelo. Angelo. Uh, we are from uh, both are from Albania, although I lived for many years in Greece, in Athens. Um, there's in some conference I've talked. Uh, there have been people that do, do not know where Albania is, and that's okay. In Pakistan, there were people that didn't know where Albania is. So, but that's weird because uh, in Greece, there were at some point there were many people come from Pakistan to Greece, and they were like uh, some of the some people from Greece didn't know where Pakistan is, which is weird because it's a very big country. Like, and this is also weird because many Greek people I know were making fun of people from the U.S. Uh, because they didn't know where Iraq is. And this is also, in general, it's, for me it's kind of crazy because there are a lot of people who don't know, not, cannot know everything, and this goes around with many cultures. And uh, this slide would be more complete if we also had, um, if, we, if I also knew about the previous slide that we saw in the intro with uh, LibreOffice communities all around the world. Um, and I'm saying this because uh, there, are, there, is, there are many countries, as mentioned by Italio, Italo this morning, um, where there is no active LibreOffice community uh, at the moment. And if you count these countries and the population of these countries, the, these are like a lot of countries, right? Uh, I personally see there a lot of potential to get more people uh, joining and contributing in many ways, just as uh, many of us do uh, and are present here as well. So, um, what's, can I, if, can I ask, like, do you know anything about Albania? Like, any hands? Uh, there is a stereotype we steal a lot. I, c I cannot confirm or deny that. So, just, so you, you mentioned? Uh, yes, very, very good. So, j uh, well, only one thing. What do you know about, like, first thing that comes in mind? Okay, <laughs> well, that doesn't count because it's... <laughs> Perfect. Well, no, it's Italo it was, has been there, so he, he knows a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. They're as bad as a young. It looks like each other, so that's... That's not a good thing. It's... <laughs> uh, so I know uh, an open source designer oh. in Albania, actually. Oh. He might be the first ever professional open source designer called Helio Koshi. Okay. No, Helio, Helio. It was in Berlin. So that's, that's another negative thing about Albania. Anything positive? <laughs> I'm joking. No, he's a friend of ours. So, uh, yeah, an interesting, you mentioned before an interesting thing that we had our supreme leader. His name was Enver Hoxha. He ruled the country from uh, the, after the Second World War until 90, um, and until the Communist Party until, uh, ruled the country until 1989. Uh, and uh, Albania was pretty isolated in the beginning. We, we had a lot of friendship with the Russians, something, I don't know, they, they, were, they were sending bad quality of vodka, so we stopped any collaboration with them. Uh, we started having collaboration with the Chinese as a, as a like, ex-communist party. They didn't have vodka at all. We didn't know this information, so we broke up with them as well. So after that, we were totally isolated. You remember, it's like, in order to understand it, it's like Korea, North Korea right now. Uh, no information going on and off, uh, in and out. Uh, I remember I was um, I, I was nearly expelled from uh, from school because uh, I had some people from outside uh, giving uh, me a gift as blue jeans, which was very very bad. And this was uh, like the only way of knowing what was happening was pirate uh, keeping uh, up with the pirate antennas in order to keep. Uh, track with TV channels from Italy or Serbia. Um, a hint, if there are people from Serbia, oh, sorry, if there are people from Serbia here, heavy metal back then was very, very bad, like horrible. Uh, how do I do this? Okay. Sorry.
Very good, sir. So, I just, uh, okay. So, as I mentioned, we're totally isolated until uh, 1981 or 1990. Um, there are some, if you go to Wikipedia Albania, there is a section about pop culture, uh, men, men, people mentioning uh, Albania from that period back then. If you have time, check it out, it's very, pretty funny. And one interesting fact is that we had seven, 700,000 bunkers all around the country. Now you d will not find that many uh, today. Um, and it, this is weird for a country, for me it's weird for a country that was very poor at, uh, at the moment. And if you are in Tirana, there is an exhibition called Bunkart, and you can understand a lot of stuff about that period as well. The, uh, this is the parliament in a bunker inside. Like, if something bad happened, uh, which I, I don't think, nothing happened because nobody was interested in a country that small at the moment. But if somebody, if uh, foreign countries invaded us, our government will go in something like this. So I was born in 1983, dictator died in 1985, um, and the whole thing collapsed. When the Scorpions released this, uh, their album with the Wind of Change, everybody was horrified, and the regime changed. Um, and from, and this, this was a turning point for Albania, because from a country that was uh, in, uh, imposed to be um, a co collaborative in each and in every kind of activity of daily life, we went to exact opposite extreme, uh, being totally individ like uh, individualism was the thing, and it still is right now. So, as I mentioned, from extremely collective, we went to the extreme individualism. You're going to see if you come, you're going to see a lot of these kind of buildings, which are like everywhere. They're very ugly, uh, and this is how the houses were before, uh, like there were more structured for me, they were more like interesting and more regulated. So for, because we are in a, in a free software conference, why are we going into this? Um, if you think of a country like Albania we would, uh, that has did this kind of history, you would believe that a uh, cooperative way of working and collabor collaboration would be pretty easy. Um, even if you are developing software or if you are like try, trying to create a community um, like Linux, right? Operating system, many, many people are all around the, all around the world co collaborating with each other and this was not happening. And uh, it's the same with platforms like LibreOffice and many other free software uh, communities and projects. Like until uh, a certain point there were nothing going on in terms of um, free software communities. And I, for the presentation I was searching a bit and this is from a 2008 mailing list uh, where some people was, were trying to create a, a community that was, let's say in general, not about LibreOffice but in general uh, about free software and open source uh, software and platforms. Uh, there were also, as far as we know, there were also other initiatives that didn't uh, work, that just they started and they stopped. So in 2012, we started uh, uh, a community called Open Labs, and uh, the idea was that we there were many elements that didn't work back then, and we thought that one of the elements that is very important uh, and didn't let things moving uh, faster were the fact that there were no physical space at the moment for people to gather. Um, and if you see these like uh, horrible pictures, picture in terms of quality, and one of the one of the lessons we learned back then is the fact that uh, you need, if you are starting something like this in countries where LibreOffice is not active at the moment, and you you want to jump start a community, an investment in a good camera in order to document your activities would be um, something very uh, a smart thing to do. And we should have known this because if you, again, if you search Albania in the 70s or 60s or 50s, there are no documentation available. People were not documenting stuff. Uh, we didn't, like a few people had cameras, but also we didn't find very interesting what was happening back then. And it's the same with uh, if you're a job starting community like we did at Open Labs in Albania. So this was one of the first 
uh, things in general, not about LibreOffice. This was a meetup about uh, Mozilla Firefox back then. And uh, more people started uh, coming in, and Angelo was one of them, and he participated. Uh, he's one of the youngest uh, members at Open Labs, actually. Uh, and he started collaborating in and being part of the community early on. And yes. you can continue. So yeah, these are some pictures from uh, various events. We have uh, decided to uh, get together with the uh, Kosovo teams. This is a picture taken in 2012, if I am correct. These are the members from the uh, Free Liberal Open Source uh, Kosovo. Uh, here we are discussing about uh, events we are going to organize and stuff like that. So this brings us in 2013. Our first OSCO is the Open Source Conference Albania, our first annual conference. Uh, many people were there. As you can see, there's a bigger number of females than males. That's something that's only uh, seen in Albania. And uh, some pictures from uh, first events, like a Linux cafe in 2015. Later on in 2015, we decided to embrace LibreOffice and its community ideology. So we thought, uh, seeing as uh, uh, we first had to take points on what was the positive aspects of uh, LibreOffice. So seeing as it's an open source project, uh, it's uh, a really good alternative to Microsoft Office, comparing to the performance, bug fixing, code uh, contribution, and uh, the ease of use. So we thought, why not uh, use this to create a base, base community and make LibreOffice better as it's now? So we first had to find ways to make people join us. So at first, LibreOffice was not that used. So we decided to use one of our simplest uh, things for everyone. And uh, that was accessible from a novice or even an expert uh, computer user. So we thought, why not about localizations? So we started to organize events. At first, not many people were present since LibreOffice was not that uh, uh, known. Later on, it, things uh, got even better. As you can see, pictures from our localization sprints. Uh, the, the UI uh, in Albanian language is almost over. So after that, we are thinking to uh, to push forward the use of uh, LibreOffice in uh, government, in uh, institutions, and even businesses, even small ones. That would be a great advantage. So... There, there are, like, until now we had eight localization sprints, sprint, yes. uh, which are done, like, approximately one per month. Um, and... Around 10 to 15 people are present each time. Progress is getting better, as we can see in Oscar 2016. <laughs> Italia couldn't miss there. This is part of his presentation for the paradigm. So yeah, we use the social media to share our events to make things a little easier to access from everyone. So what did, did we learn? From the, these are some proposals for benefiting new communities of LibreOffice. We have to use physical space through hackerspaces, meetups, events like this one, a conference. And uh, this could create a positive vibe of productivity. We, uh, where regional cross-border collaborations work, we, we need to collaborate with other uh, communities. Yes, things uh, like that. We have to avoid at any cost the expression of lead attitude. We need to make a difference between the uh, paid staff and volunteers. Uh, there, if there is no gender balance, there is no community. As you have, may have seen from the pictures, there are more females than males in our uh, events. This uh, says something that is not seen in the other parts of the world. So we can use the resources that are like there, like your office wiki. We use to maintain and uh, get them further. So starting with localization or just TR pizza, it's sometimes a good idea and a, fir a good first step. So we, as Radon said, we should use, make sure that we have get excellent photos and documentation for all events. And great design is also a must. 
So if I, if I may, um, these are learnings that we had uh, in Albania with that cultural background and that did kind of hard, like it was very hard, as I mentioned at the beginning, doing collaborative work uh, in the first place. So this doesn't mean that this, uh, all, this can, all these learnings uh, are this work in any, any country. Uh, what's the point here is that uh, different countries or different cities, different communities uh, have different character character characteristics. And if, you, if we don't understand what might be the, uh, the main problem or the main issue to jumpstart this community, we're probably going to work a lot and will not be very productive in terms of jumpstarting this community, right? Uh, in Central Europe, uh, these communities are very, uh, have many participants in any kind of area, localization, development. Uh, but if we, if we focus in, in countries there is, where there is no pres presence, we should keep in mind that this, this takes time, uh, years, as it, it, was, it, it was in our case. And it also has a lot of cultural elements that we need to keep in keep in mind. One of the one of the areas, uh, one of the points that is the keeping uh, avoiding the the lead culture that is in some of the communities. It it has been very hard for us to uh, sometimes, and this is not about the liberal office community, but it's sometimes in some free uh, software communities. Once you are a newbie, and you tend to do stupid questions. There are, there are no stupid questions, but people will gonna jump in you and say, what you said is like, Google it or do something else. This turns people off, and this is something that uh, old collaboration, old, old contributors might not want to do this, but I don't know, some, it's a human thing and it comes out after a while, right? So we should avoid this at, uh, as, uh, at any cost. And um, the other thing I want to, pay, to point out is that um, uh, one of the golden rule is be nice to other people in t if you want to build a community. Uh, if you like lack of empathy, uh, there's probably going to be a hard, it's probably going to be a hard time of ha being effective on having many many people joining you as well. These are things that might sound like common a common thing, um, but it might uh, in practice. This might be also very uh, complicated or hard to get implemented. The human factor is the most, let's say, important uh, round here. Um, are we done? Okay. So th the idea is to initiate a, a debate. So if there are no questions, there we did it probably didn't do well. <laughs> Especially Angelo, who is done. He is doing this presentation for the first, first time. time. So. <laughs> Thanks.